Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio is now 10.86% and that is official. Hello and welcome to Tax Matters. I'm Chamaka Ohawuchi. We have in our hands a press release from the Federal Inner Revenue Service conveying to the public the information passed to it from the National Bureau of Statistics on Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio. Viewers will recall that for a long time, Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio was put at 6%. In recent years, the ratio became a subject of controversy with leading lights in the Nigerian economic space questioning the base or the basis, if you like, of the computation. This led to some stakeholders coming up with a figure of 8%. So, depending on who you spoke to, we got responses of the ratio being 6% or 8%. The bone of contention or the suggestions, if you like, was that collection figures from other revenue collecting agencies at national and subnational levels were not included. Now, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, this has been done. The new ratio was communicated to the FIRS via a letter signed by the Statistician General of the Federation, Prince Adeyemi Adeniron, on the 25th of May 2023, following a joint review by the National Bureau of Statistics in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Finance and the FIRS, using data from 2010 to 2021. The revision took into account revenue items hitherto not included in the computations, particularly relevant revenue collected by other agencies of government. Tax to GDP ratio is a measure of a nation's tax revenue relative to the size of the economy as measured by gross domestic product. The ratio is a useful tool for assessing the health of a country's tax system and highlighting its tax potentials relative to the size of the economy. It is the ultimate measure of the effectiveness of a nation's tax system compared to other countries. The Statistician General of the Federation, Prince Adeyemi Adeniron, in his letter to the Executive Chairman of FIRS, described the revision as a facelift to the tax to GDP ratio for Nigeria in comparison with other countries. In a statement announcing the new tax to GDP ratio, the Executive Chairman of FIRS, Mr. Muhammad Nami, explained that sources which previously put the country's tax to GDP ratio at between 5% and 6% did not consider tax revenue accruing to other government agencies in their computation particularly revenues collected by agencies other than the FIRS, such as customs and state's internal revenue services. In recomputing the ratio, key indicators that were previously left out were taken into account. This resulted into a revised tax to GDP ratio of 10.86%. Mr. Nami further noted that Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio should ordinarily be higher than 10.86%, but for certain economic and fiscal policy factors, including tax waivers and leakages occasioned by the country's fragmented tax system. In a follow up interview, the Executive Chairman FRS shed more light on this all important issue and other related matters. Mr. Nami, thank you for joining us on Tax Matters. Thank you very much. We guess that congratulations are in order for this achievement in our tax to GDP ratio ranking. What are some of the things that have changed that increased this ratio? Let's first of all give glory to God and to also thank the entire FRS uh, staff, uh, including management and the board of the FRS and stakeholders like you and uh, also um, the entire uh, taxpayers in the country and those that are paying from outside Nigeria. Uh, what has just changed uh, is quite simple. First, we've done a lot of reforms which, is, uh, which are currently impacting positively our business processes. And uh, you will remember in the year 2021, our revenue collection uh, rose from uh, 5 trillion to about 6.4 uh, trillion. Secondly, the subnationals too, the states 
and the local government revenue authorities are also playing their own very important part in, in making sure that they make money available to the state governors. So uh, in addition to that, what has changed uh, ideally is the fact that before now, everybody in the country continue to complain that uh, we have multiplicity of taxes, that Nigerians are overtaxed, according to some people in some quarters, yet there is little in the hand of government for them to be able to provide social amenities to the citizens, provide critical infrastructure that citizens need, and also secure lives and properties of the citizens. So what has happened also is that um, we try to see what we can do to block these leakages to make sure that the multiplicity and the leakages in tax systems are blocked. That is number one. Number two, we also discover that if, if people are complaining of being overtaxed, where are these tax revenues going? Then we look at what has been happening in the past, we discover that taxes and levies that hit at all are, are collected by uh, ministries, departments, and agencies that are collecting them. These taxes and levies are not accounted for in the course of computing uh, uh, tax to gross domestic pro uh, product of this country. So what we now did, we started the process, we set up an independent assessment team to look at the issues and they worked several, uh, several days, several months with the accountant general office to identify those ministry departments and agencies that are collecting levies and taxes, but other, uh, uh, because of the fact that they are, they are not remitting to federation account, uh, uh, the, those details are captured and recognized as part of the taxes and levies paid by Nigerians which other are remitted directly to the agencies for their own expenditure or are, are, are re, re, remitted directly to, to, to consolidated revenue fund account of the federal government. So these are taxes and levies that we brought together in addition to what we have in uh, at FAC level, which is the one given by the, uh, the, the then DPR as uh, royalty, which is now called a commission, the Federal Land Revenue Service, the custom. In addition to this three, we and the State Internal Revenue Service, we have brought in those taxes. And that is why the tax to GDP has grown from 6% to about 11% now. What is the FRS doing with regards to expanding the tax net? We are doing a lot, which you are aware of. We continue to deploy technology. And with technology, those in the tax pay that are hit at are not uh, accessible or that we are not able to uh, uh, see and, and uh, now uh, reduce their activity to tax, taxes, we are now able to bring them to tax net. So with technology and uh, the data that we are collecting using the collaboration we are doing with critical stakeholders like... Uh, uh, the banks like the NIMSE and the integration with uh, Corporate Affairs Commission. And in the course of uh, f uh, monthly filings of value added tax today, because most of the processes are being automated, you see that as people are making impute VAT claims on daily basis, more of these uh, taxpayers are brought to tax net. This figure is for 2021. When are we getting that of 2022, and what do you expect it to look like? The, the national target for the country is that by end of the year 2024, we are expecting to have the sub-Saharan sub average of 15% tax to GDP. So we are confident that if we are, we, are, we are done with collection of figures, particularly from the ministry, department, agency that are, are still uh, uh, working on the their financial statement and the reconciliations that we are already doing with our content general office and the joint task board, we are confident by the month of August this year, the revised figure for the year 2022 will be ready. We don't want to work on estimate, we want to work on reliable data that 
will not be contested by any third party that is reviewing the figures. Still moving on in the matter of Nigeria's new tax to GDP ratio ranking, Mr. Nami, Executive Chairman FRS, is still our guest. Mr. Nami, in the press release on this matter, you spoke about efforts being made to harmonize taxes in Nigeria. How far have you gone on that? Well, so far so good. Uh, this is a very difficult question because it's an issue of constitution. Uh, the first step we've taken is that we had a national task dialogue in the year 2022 and the dialogue was dedicated to discussing and identifying issues that are practically uh, affecting tax administration in Nigeria. And part of the issue that we discussed was the fragmented tax system, system and multiplicity of taxes. So uh, what we came to conclude at the end of that dialogue was that there is the need for us to address the issue of multiplicity of taxes, address the issue of fragmented tax system, so that we are able to block leakages and stop Nigerians from being overtaxed. Because one thing is for you to pay taxes or levy, and another thing is for you for the government of uh, the country, maybe at the three level, maybe at the local or state of federal government, to have access to this. So what we decided to do was to we would come up with a communique to say that there is the need for the three levels of government to sit together and see to coming out with strategy on how to harmonize our tax administration system in order for us to be able to address a uh, multiplicity of taxes, uh, be, uh, be able to uh, address fragmented, uh, fragmented tax system and also do what others are doing globally by making sure that in every, if you go around the whole world, virtually all the countries have one tax administration system. With one tax administration system, taxpayers are not able to dodge tax men. In other words, they find it difficult to meander between the tax authorities. And if that is made impossible, the leakages in our tax system can easily be addressed. And if you address leakages in tax system, certainly there will be enough money on the tables of each of the state government, the local, the several and several local government, and the center for them to be able to build infrastructure, for them to be able to provide social amenities for their citizens, and for them to be able to cater for security and safety of the same citizens. What efforts are being made to ensure that all taxable incomes are brought into the baskets? Thank you so much. We are currently working on that and we have gone to advanced stage to the extent that we already have a contract and there is already an acceptance. In other words, we are already executing contract between ourselves and the uh, consultant that is helping us to build the capacity of the FRS staff vis-a-vis -vis giving us the roadmap for ensuring data centralization through a project we call Data for Tax. We've gone far uh, on that project to the extent that I remember about a month ago signing off about 50% of the cost of that project and the preliminary uh, designs, the preliminary uh, capacity building, the, the issues of integrating with NIMSI, for instance, issues of integrating with uh, corporate affairs and other critical stakeholders have, have already gone far because we did not just contact these agencies or government so that we are able to work with them and get to have access to the data that they have, but we have signed individual MOU with these organizations that I've mentioned and we continue to serve we, we did not even stop at that. We have gone out of this country. We've signed agreement with uh, revenue authorities like His Majesty uh, Revenue and Custom in the UK. And we are doing a lot with multi multilateral agencies like ETAF, Qatar, and so many other uh, organizations in 
and we also have signed into automatic exchange of information which is an international arrangement for exchange of data and in, in intelligence for tax administration so we are building a robust infrastructure which can be can is just be called uh, uh, a central data that we are going to use for tax for the data intelligence gathering data in uh, uh, warehousing and data processing so that in the future if Mr. A does business in Nigeria we have uh, uh, a view of whatever he has done if he goes out of Nigeria and he has a business undertaking with his business partner uh, outside Nigeria or what we call a borderless transaction a situation whereby somebody sits in the comfort of his room and is transacting business with people in different countries of this world we are able to have a seamless view, access, and reduce those data for the purpose of tax administration. Finally, Executive Chairman, sir, what is the end in sight? What is the game plan? No, while we widen our tax net, I think for, for now and for the fact that petroleum subsidy has just been stopped or removed. I will not be in a position to advise uh, anybody or the National Assembly to say that we should increase our tax uh, rate. What we should, should do is we we'll continue to work on building infrastructure that will give us the opportunity to be able to have a seamless view or bring uh, every tax intelligence together in a, central, in a centralized data bank so that we are able to raise revenue. The leakages are so much, the informal sector is, a, is, 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 is very huge and if we are able to uh, marry uh, the provisions of uh, Finax Act 2019 which exempted some of the businesses that have just under between 25 million and below and uh, the numbers there in the so-called informal sector. But in practical sense, the, those sectors can no longer be called informal. The only things that they have failed to formalize their businesses, and what we'll do with that by way of bringing them to register with us, those that have yet to be reg registered and have bank account, it makes life easy for us. We are now able to go back to CSC to say, these people have graduated from being an individual trader to now an organized uh, uh, business uh, entity. If that is not possible, we will now work with the respective union of those sectors that they operate and see what we can do to bring them to, to tax them. So in a nutshell, in as much as you are able to deploy technology, you are able to collaborate with tech, uh, st uh, critical stakeholders, you are able to uh, uh, build capacity of FRS staff. You can be rest assured that the 10 Naira we are collecting today, for instance, can be 20 Naira tomorrow. There you are. Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio is now 10.86%. And we say again, that is official. Nigeria is gradually moving towards the regional average of 15%. And who knows? Maybe very soon, Nigeria can even climb up to the OECD average. It is an offense punishable by a fine of 10 million naira and or imprisonment for any agency of the federal government other than FIRS to demand for books or returns for the purposes of tax. It is also an offence to carry out the function of assessment, collection or enforcement of tax or pay any portion of tax revenue to any person or into any account other than the relevant accounts designated by the Constitution or relevant laws of the National Assembly. It pays to pay your tax. This message is brought to you by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. Still on this matter, 
we have reached out to other stakeholders in the taxation subsector and we want to share with you an excerpt from one of our engagements. Mr. Yegele, thank you for joining us on Tax Matters. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Sir, the tax to GDP ratio of Nigeria is now 10.86% from the abysmally low 6%. This is really good news. Now, with all this talk about tax-to-GDP ratio of a country or an economy, what really is the essence of tax-to-GDP ratio? What does it say about a country's economy and what does it mean to the ordinary man? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so, tax-to-GDP ratio, GDP is gross domestic products and is the value of the outputs if you simplify it, it means what is it that we are producing? Goods and services, what is it worth? So the more that you produce, the more that your economy is worth, the more the prosperity for the people, right? So for governments, uh, it goes beyond that. They're saying this value that we have in the economy, how much of it are we able to take in form of taxes to provide infrastructure, social services, civil servant salary, take care of security, right? Because we need government for us to have a country. So that's why it's so important, because the more you can get in form of taxes from your GDP, the more your ability as a country to provide what the people need. So you are right, we were having it at like 6% for a number of years. It used to be around 12% before Nigeria's GDP was rebased around 2014. After the rebasing, it went down significantly, and it has been that for, for a number of years. What has happened now, and we need to commend the FRS for initiating that process, is to say, actually, are we calculating these right? Mm -hmm. And the answer was no, we're not calculating it right. We, we have a peculiar situation that is not something to be proud of. And that is that in Nigeria, you have all manners of agencies collecting mm. revenue, even tax revenue. In most countries, it's only the tax authority. So once you get the number from the tax authorities, you can calculate your tax to GDP ratio. So we couldn't gather all the information properly. Whatever we were able to gather, we used it to calculate the tax to GDP ratio. How does that impact all of us and the ordinary person on the street? Moody's. Uh, standards and poor, all these international rating agencies downgraded Nigeria. Mm. And the reason they gave was your revenue is too low to meet your obligations. Yeah. And what that meant is interest rates went up, both for government and for the private sector. It means that for you and I and the ordinary person watching your program, they're having to pay more in terms of costs than they need to pay because Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio is very low. Even f by African standard, the average is about 18%. Nigeria was at 6%. Mm. So now that we've made that correction, it doesn't mean that we have money in the bank accounts <laughs> immediately, but it means that we are calculating it the right way, we are sending the right signals, mm. and then people will start saying, well, maybe Nigeria is not as crazy and terrible as we think. Maybe there's hope. We now need to then move from that 10 point something so quickly get to about 18% and even start targeting the OECD average of around 30, 34%. How do we calculate tax to GDP ratio? What are the factors, the indices, the mathematical abracada abracada in calculating the tax to GDP ratio? Yes, yeah, so, the, so there are two uh, elements you're looking for. You're looking for GDP, gross domestic pro product. Mm -hmm. You're looking for tax. So the gross domestic product is the work of the Bureau of Statistics. They do that and they release the reports every three months. So like I said before, is the output in the economy of goods and services. Now, which means we can now focus on tax. What exactly is tax? So for the purpose of calculating tax to GDP ratio, you are looking for any compulsory payment to government required by law which is mandatory, which means you don't have a choice to say you don't want to pay, right? And that goes to all levels of government, local government, state government, and federal government. Whether it's collected by a government agency, FRS, or government directly, okay. including personal income tax, VAT, royalty, capital gains tax, stamp duties, 
But we even have some other levies that are taxes, like NDDC levy, right? So oil companies have to pay that as a percentage of their budget. Uh, you have local content levy, 1% of turnover. Those are taxes. They were not included. So bringing all those taxes together, whatever amount that gives you, divided by the gross domestic product of the country, it gives you the tax to GDP ratio. That's the method for calculating tax to GDP ratio. It's getting clearer, isn't it? For more on this all-important matter, Tune in to Tax Matters next week, same station, same day of the week, same time of the day. There is plenty more ahead. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Congratulations, Nigeria.